Hi everybody, welcome to 21 days until Christmas. Today is number 17. So 17 days until Christmas. Who is your favorite sibling and what do you remember about them? And the reason I'm talking about this is that I have a notification earlier that uh, one of my sisters, uh, it's her birthday today. So my sister's birthday, um, is today and uh, she's my favorite one. So what makes a sibling uh, being your favorite one? What do they do for you? How are they uh, similar to you? And uh, why do they like you? Why do they show appreciation and love? And uh, what do you feel when you think of them? <laughs> so uh, my sister, uh, Teresa, um, uh, in Spanish is Teresa and um, uh, she has a daughter the same name. Uh, she's very loving and caring and appreciative. She's an excellent mom. She is a good sister and she is someone I am uh, grateful to have in my life as example, as a guidance, as um, having loving support, love and support uh, both of them and uh, being my fan and being someone that likes my videos and uh, uh, is happy when I call her, is happy to hear my voice, is uh, happy to know how I'm doing, that uh, worries about me and prays uh, that God grants me uh, my heart's desires that I have a beautiful life. So who do you have in your life like that, that prays for you? and wishes you to have a beautiful life and uh, likes your videos and likes your pictures and likes to see you and is happy when they talk to you and is happy to hear what you have to say and just uh, admires what you say and how you view life and the things you say and the things you teach. And she is that person for me. She is a fan, she is a loving sister she is um, someone I look up to be like her because she's older than me. <laughs> and uh, it's just a treasure that I have, um, my sister Teresa. So I study spirituality and now I teach it, but um, you never uh, stop learning, of course, as much as you teach something. The more you teach, the more you learn and the more you uh, get uh, messages and realization so I was telling her that um, her name is not wrong it seems to me like she has a similar uh, soul to Mother Teresa she's very loving and caring and her kids are fortunate to have her as a mother because she's amazing <laughs> there is no other person uh, that um, I can think about in the way I can think of her as an example as uh, someone who um, it's not important for her to buy clothes or to look nice or to to buy stuff she wants her kids to have it first and then she's at the end so uh, she sometimes will be wearing clothes for my mom because my mom has a lot of clothes and she is so beautiful she was so beautiful as a, a single lady she has curly hair and uh, she never liked uh to do much makeup so she's like very simple on her face but she has this uh natural beauty to her um expression to her uh uh face you know and um i remember when she was uh younger she married like really young she wasn't even 15 years old and uh, i remember she was uh training karate and her legs just got uh, she had big legs but they were beautiful so they were toned and you see these beautiful legs, but she only did it for a while. And then she stopped and she got married uh, really young. I remember um, my mom crying like two nights straight. And uh, it was six of us. And my sister Teresa is the one that um, first got uh, taken. And uh, so the way it happened is that uh, the uh, husband-to-be didn't ask for her hand. She just kind of escaped with him. And so when that happens, then a family member who is older, typically the parents or the grandpa has to come and talk to your mom. So they came and talked to my mom and I remember her crying. 
she cried. Uh, they probably came home around like eight or nine p.m. It's typically in the times that they, they happen, they they make arrangements and they come for a reunion. So they basically come and tell the parents that uh, the daughter is with the with the son or the grandson, and uh, they want to respond to the aggression in the way of saying that um, they're gonna get married and they apologize for the circumstances that. Uh, the son or grandson didn't ask for uh, the Hannah front and they just um, decided to leave together. And um, I don't know what made her uh, do it that way. I know it was very painful for my mom because she was the first one that uh, left uh, to get married and she wasn't even 15. So my mom married at 18. So for my mom to... Um, acknowledge that uh, uh, her kid, you know, she was a girl is still like, is still, um, you know, in, in her teenagers, so very young. Um, she got pregnant really quick. And after she gave birth to the first boy, uh, three months later, she's pregnant again with the second one. So her family grew really fast and she was so young. I uh, don't understand how she was able to keep the marriage together. Uh, there was struggles, there was situations. Uh, she came home crying uh, many times for different reasons. Uh, sometimes it will be because uh, one of the boys was sick. I remember the older one got sick uh, once. He was not even two years old and he was taken to the hospital and she almost, uh, he almost died, so she was um, crying, crying home and telling my mom, mom, uh, the boy, the boy, and she was crying uh, day and night, you know, I don't know how she did it. She was so young, but she never gave up. She kept on having kids, loving the husband, taking care of them, doing what is right, uh, teaching them uh, right from wrong, and uh, making them responsible, and making them cooperative and um, staying in the marriage, you know, regardless of how it went. Uh, at the beginning, the family didn't like her so much and then they learned to like her. She was not only beautiful outside, she was beautiful inside. And they had to get to know her and stop the judgment they had against my mom, against our family, against, you know, the odds that uh, if they will stay together or they will continue together or not. And, they had to let go of all that. And sometimes when families uh, get united in these situations, it's, it's hard to, to make it smooth. It's hard to make it um, in peace. It's hard to make it harmoniously. I remember my mom used to say uh, when those situations happen, she says, sometimes we just um, revolve the water and then we have to drink it, right? And she referred to that in a way that uh, sometimes we talk uh, and unkind things about each other, uh, families or about uh, you know other people. And then when those situations happen, when you have to uh, unite the families, it's hard because you have to drink all those offenses that you threw to them and they have to drink those offenses that they threw to you because now you have to become a family. Now the two families are united because of the marriage and uh, because of these uh, two young people having kids, right? So sometimes the combining of the families is hard for uh, both parties, but it's also hard for siblings. Um, I remember that impacted me a lot when I saw that, so I thought, uh, when I want to get married, I don't want to do it that way. I want my mom to know that I'm getting married. But uh, now as I, um, I been, you know, growing up and, and getting older and um, having kids, you know, and being separated from them, it's never easy, you know, regardless of the circumstances, separating from your kids uh, is not easy, but sometimes you need those separations. Sometimes when you separate from them, it's for them to um, go in their own ways and appreciate uh, what you give them. Um, we've been going through um, this uh, generation of kids that are unappreciated and they expect uh, that you give them everything. 
and it's never enough, right? It's like the world owes me, give me, give me, but I'm not supposed to do much to, uh, to deserve it or to work for it, right? They want uh, everything to be given to them. They want uh, the best cars, the very best computer systems, the best phones, the best clothes and everything. But once when they need to buy it on their own, then you see them going to the thrift store. Then you see them bargain, you know, and it's this an ability that they have to pay bills. They expect to be supported. And uh, this is the current generation that we are dealing with. Um, I remember when I was younger, it was, uh, and it still is uh, getting rid of the old beliefs and getting rid of the old ways, but um, our generation has such a, a hard time with parenting. You know, our parents had their old ways and uh, they were very controlling, very strict. Uh, you couldn't do much. I remember we had to be home by uh, 10 o'clock. That was our um, deadline, you know, that was our uh, curfew, how they call it in here, 10 o'clock and all past that, you know, um, it wasn't seen well that you sleep with the boyfriend before you get married and uh, virginity was important and many things have changed. You know, I, I am grateful for the changes because when I was younger, men were more encouraged to have a career than women. Uh, only people who had money or uh, new people who knew how to get grants and stuff um, got those opportunities. I remember getting grants at school and when you went to um, the government offices, they will steal it from you. I remember that you will go and sign one of those checks and they will copy your signature. And then soon enough, after like a couple of months and sometimes even after the first month, uh, they made it disappear. They say, well, the government didn't send anymore. So you will be going to the offices and there's nothing in there, you know, it didn't matter how smart you were, it didn't matter how uh, much you needed to help your economic situation and uh, how much of a promise you could have been to the country, they didn't care about that. People just stole from uh, young uh, kids, you know, young uh, teenagers and young students that really needed the help and these were adults that um, work at the uh, uh, government offices and they just didn't care. You know, they just wanted the benefit for themselves. Then um, how do you feel, you know, when you're taking advantage and uh, when uh, maybe people in your family don't buy for your grants? I remember I got one in elementary school and the school director told my sister, uh, make sure to tell uh, your mom, one of your sisters uh, got a grant. And she couldn't believe it. She says, no, I don't think uh, they're smart enough. So she let it go, you know, soon enough, we uh, I went and um, tried to get the grant and it wasn't there anymore. Either it was stolen or they will say, well, it's just got returned because no one claimed it. And I got mad this time because I, um, I had, uh, I had um, uh, gotten it, it was for me. And she was just mean. She said, well, I didn't believe any of you guys deserve it. And she knew I had good grades, it's just she was selfish. She didn't want it us to have that kind of money. And it wasn't even that much, you know? It's just, sometimes you have siblings that are, they are selfish. They don't want you to get the benefits of what you're entitled to get or the opportunities that uh, could possibly make your life uh, better. I remember the same sister when I was um, probably 15, around 14, somewhere that age, um, I was working uh, at the store where she was working, she was like the manager. And one time I remember there was like a training, there was a training on uh, customer service. And I say, I wanted to go. She said, no, you're too young, I'm not gonna take you. I said, please take me, take me. And it was a free training. She didn't want me to go. And uh, when she came out from the training, I said, uh, tell me what they tell you. She said, no, I'm not gonna tell you. I said, yes, tell me what they tell you. She says, uh, well, the most important thing they said is that uh, when you have a customer, you should call them by their name, that their name is the sound that they like the most and the uh, best way they feel identified with themselves and the best way they feel taken care of. If you can remember their name and address people by their name, then that is very important. I say, what else? She says, uh, they gave us a book. I said, oh, I want to read that book. And she gave me this book and it was uh, the seven uh, keys to success, something like that. So it told the story about a man that had a disability, 
but the way he uh, managed to make money was uh, through hard work, basically. And that was the message of the book. But um, I was amazed to see that uh, she didn't even want me to read the book. And I don't understand why. How will I harm her in me reading the book and uh, getting to know uh, how to treat someone better in customer service, how to be uh, achieving when you're working, when you're making money. Uh, she didn't seem to like uh, me making more money than her or even making money to begin with. I remember when I started working, um, I was not even 15 years old and it was a temporary job and she had me do a lot of work. And then I will come home and mom will ask her, how is she doing? And she said, oh, she's lazy. She doesn't do much. And, and I was super tired. She put me to do a lot of work. She had no consideration. She would yell at me in front of uh, people that came in in front of customers. And uh, she would just be very demanding, not appreciative. I remember um, when uh, the boss uh, used to make dinner for us and it was a rich house that so we went up and it was a delicious dinner and they had dessert. They had uh, um, these um, drinks made of uh, fresh fruits and it was delicious. And she didn't even like me eating that, you know, she didn't even thought that I deserved it. She thought it was too much to give to me. And I don't forget that, you know, I don't forget uh, that treatment. That wasn't fair, you know, I didn't deserve that. I was her sister and uh, she was uh, uh, not happy with the fact that I looked like her. I was a sister that looked like her the most, but, um, I had a better body shape, but mine was more feminine. And uh, I think she hated me for that, you know, because my face was similar and she didn't feel that I was prettier than her, but uh, she couldn't have my uh, body type. And just the way I was, I was kind, I was appreciative, I was grateful, I, was, uh, I wasn't giving problems. I wasn't someone that uh, calls the attention by giving problems. I knew that my mom had a lot on her plate and I knew that um, she didn't need me to misbehave. She needed me to help her. And I understood that at a young age, I didn't want to give her problems. I just wanted her to be proud of me. And I did everything what I can. So after that season, I went and moved on and got another job and then another job and another job. And soon enough, I was making more money than my sisters and I was uh, almost a baby. It was one of the little ones, you know, and, and they didn't like that. They didn't like me buying nice shoes or buying clothes. And they didn't like the fact that uh, mom didn't want to take money from me because she didn't need it. But I always offered if she needed to pay a bill or she needed money for anything, I could give her half of my paycheck or whatever she needed. But um, I wasn't making much, you know, I was able to buy shoes maybe every couple of weeks or like an outfit and uh, some food when we went out, pay for dinner and buy me things. But um, it, it, to me, that kind of money wasn't a lot of money. It wasn't the kind of money I was dreaming to have. Uh, some people uh, is happy with an amount of money. Um, I am not, I am not happy with the amount of money people is happy with. And it's not because I am an unhappy person, it's because I see money in a bigger way. I see money in a bigger possibility. And if you can have more, why not have it more? You know, just find a way, do your job in a way where they can pay you more. I wasn't afraid to ask for a raise. I wasn't afraid to go to another business. If there was a little place that didn't want to give me a raise, I, I will kindly ask, you know, um, can you possibly give me a raise? I see that uh, this other person make this much money. Will that be a possibility? I make you for a while. And uh, they will say no. And I say, well, that's fine, thank you. And then uh, soon enough, I'm gone. <laughs> you know, I'm gone, I'm out of there. Uh, I'll be a couple months in a job and I'll see nothing coming for me, nothing what I needed or expected or thought I will deserve and I'll be gone, goodbye. And then I'll be finding another job, you know, a bigger location. And I will be asking how much can you pay me? And they say, well, we can pay you this much. And it's what I was asking on my other job. So I'll be moving. And then if I didn't like it for any reason, I'll leave and go somewhere else. And that's what I did until I got married. Just keep on moving. And eventually I got uh, more money than uh, my older sisters. And it's just because some of them stayed at places that were little. 
and they only had one employee. One of my sisters was the only employee at the, um, it was like a candy store. They used to sell uh, candies and, and boxes and boxes. And uh, it was just like a candy, uh, basically, not like a not like a supermarket. It was a little place, but it sold uh, candy, you know, uh, hard candy, chocolates and all that. That was it, uh, the main merchandise. Sometimes they have like watches or little other things, but um, she stayed there for years and she didn't want to change bosses. And uh, they weren't busy. She was sitting on a chair most of the time. And I didn't like that. To me, that was boring. I wasn't attached to any boss. I was attached to learning, uh, do things quickly, uh, learn things. I, I was a cashier. And uh, my boss, uh, the last boss I had, it was a medical doctor. He had a pharmacy at the end of the market. And it was a super big store. He has so much merchandise. So I was a cashier. Um, that was constantly at, at the cash register because I could remember the prices. Like a lot of times we had uh, issues where we will put, uh, we will mark the prices and this, the, the tab will come out. Or sometimes um, we sold it so fast that we didn't have time to price it. So the doctor wanted me to tell him what was the last price I remember. I'll be like, but that's new, you know, that's a new lotion. I don't know how much you price it now. He said, just tell me how much is it because he will, jump on the register on my side when I got a big line and he'll say Maria how much is this and then I'll say 325 527 750 whatever you know so I'll tell it like really quick because I was uh, doing it all day so I knew all the prices about everything so for him he didn't want it to run back uh, we uh, have inner phones and he could call and check the price but he didn't like to do that he would just ask me and uh, so at the end of the day, we will be counting the money. And um, I remember a couple of times being short and his wife being mad at me because I couldn't remember, you know, what did I pay? So whenever we got like merchandise coming in, they will give me an invoice and I'll take money out of the register and uh, pay the people. And I, I used to put those receipts underneath. But sometimes there was something I didn't uh, write down due to being super busy or the little paper will get lost and then she'll be worried that I took the money. And then the following day, I'll remember, you know, because it was a long day. I had a lot of people. And then I'll tell her uh, what happened. Oh, you know what? I forgot that I paid uh, so-and-so uh, uh, um, wages, you know. They came here and they needed money, so I had to give them an advance. Or um, I forgot that I uh, paid for, uh, you know, some merchandise that they brought. And, and the invoice is, is not on the drawer, but it's under the register. So I will remember, you know, or... I will tell her, well, uh, your husband talked you because he wanted to check uh, the invoice with the merchandise or he was checking uh, to put the prices on the computer. You know, but there was always something, but I never stole anything. So uh, they didn't uh, value me until I came here and I wasn't uh, available anymore to work for them. Um, I remember calling back uh, to my mom uh, even not too long ago, and she said, well, uh, <laughs> she said, uh, your ex boss is uh, the wife wants to know if you're ever coming back so you can work with them. I said, never. She said, what? I said, yeah, tell them I'm never going to go back to work for them. She said, oh, well, I said, well, I'm not planning to go. I don't think they're going to have me as employee again. And who knows? No, it's not on my plan. And I know you, uh, you're supposed to never say never, but that's what came out of me. You know, at that time, I didn't see it as a possibility anytime soon. So um, I was uh, probably 19, 20, 19, 20 years old when I, when I worked for them. And uh, it's just uh, such a job that you do that people wishes you come back and take care of business for them. And it's not me. <laughs> Not me in Mexico anymore. Not me uh, the way I used to be. And it's not because I don't know how to do it. It's just because I'm doing so much more. I'm not a cashier at a marketplace. I'm not the person in charge at the uh, uh, store where they sell school supplies. Because I used to do that and she loved me. I was solo uh, employee, you know, the only one on the floor. And I will do everything. And uh, they didn't see the value until I left, so... I wish I could have continued to work, but I got married and then my husband didn't want me to work and I uh, I preferred to work, but he didn't let me. So he put me a little corner store and I wasn't, uh, you know, making much money and that was boring. And then when I get really mad and he says, well, uh, we're going to bring you to Las Vegas and I said, let's go, <laughs> let's go.
<laughs> a life change, right? So um, I don't know how much money is a lot of money for you. Uh, everyone has a different concept about money. And I think once when you make more, you understand it's, it's not that much because you spend it, you know, every time you you go into a new break of uh, income, you go into a new break of life. So it's like, you're still spending, you know, and uh, you buy things that are more luxurious, that are branded, that are uh, according to the team, or you buy things that you always wanted to have. And that's, that's human nature. <laughs> I just see it that way, you know. Uh, when people has money, you can even buy uh, uh, towels uh, that are expensive, that are branded, you know, that you didn't tell that you will uh, buy before. It's just like Oprah Winfrey says that <laughs> the the more money she gets, uh, the more expensive towels she buys. And this is bath towels, you know, <laughs> towels that you're drying your body with or hand towels. So uh, what are you buying that is a, a, a luxury for you? and um, something you went and buy, you know, like she buys the red sole shoes, which are a uh, local team. And those are like $15,000 at least, and even more, you know, depending on uh, how um, how much of uh, the trend is it. <laughs> I used to work at uh, Palaxo in Vegas. And uh, there was a store where we sold uh, dresses with crystals. So our merchandise went from $500 to $20,000. And uh, on the way of going to Elise, there was Louboutin. So uh, one of our salesperson uh, also worked there. And sometimes I will go and ask for the prices or I will stand out of the store because it was like glass uh, um, uh, walls or windows, I guess. And, and you could see the prices. So I'll be amazed to see this uh, beautiful uh, shoes with the red sole and they were like $15,000 up to like 50,000. So 75 and I'll be like, oh my God. So I'll be, um, you know, uh, picking to see who gets there and it will be like artists, uh, famous people or uh, people that have money and they will leave with the bag and they used to walk on the mall uh, all the way, you know, kind of uh, showing up that they have a low routine. Uh, back because they're all that expensive so the luxury is you get you know uh, as you get money <laughs> everything in life changes you know people sometimes stand in their smile you see people with this beautiful teeth and they get their uh, teeth corrected and it, a lot of it is people who speaks or singers or people who interview so other people who is on tv so the smile is very important right so you want to uh, make it uh polished and um it's just changing you know the technology right now and advances in science and um um plastic surgery and all kinds of treatments are very um creative and they can also be affordable but why are you choosing you know, what are you choosing out of the options? And I think it depends how much money you have. <laughs> like lately, the trend I see on ladies that have money is that they make their uh, bottom lip bigger. And soon enough, it's like so big, you know, like it's some it seems like it's out there, like like the skin inside your lip is out like that. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> this lady has money, <laughs> right? And, and just trends that come along, uh, years ago when the nails started coming up and everybody has like, you know, the uh, acrylic nails like mine. And then uh, everybody has nails, like older ladies, all kinds. And and then um, not too long ago, eyelashes extensions. And <laughs> I had a lady at the Italian restaurant um, last month, well, a couple of ladies. And she says, uh, do you know, she says, well, I love your lashes. She says, do you know who does uh, eyelash extensions? I say me. She said, give me a card, give me your number, because you know what she says? We're the only two old ladies that don't have lashes. She says, even people in the bus have lashes. She says, even ladies, you know, I've seen girls and older people. She says, everybody has lashes. Now we are the two only older ladies that don't have lashes. And it's just trends, you know, trends in, in, um, in uh, our society that come out and everybody wants it. So um, what is the trend for you? I remember um, years ago when I was younger, uh, the trend came out about tattooing your face, tattooing your uh, 
eyebrows and uh, do uh, tattoo your um, lips where it looks like you have uh, makeup or the line in here or the line on top that people had it tattooed. And um, that was never attractive to me. <laughs> that was never attractive because I said, what if I'm uh, ever in the hospital and uh, I know I'm unable to uh, have makeup on, but having tattoos like that didn't seem like it's the way I wanted to look. I thought if I have a baby or if I'm uh, having uh, sickness when I'm uh, dying or whatever, I want people to see me on my natural face. For me, that wasn't attractive. And uh, not too long ago, we also had um, the eyebrows where they're like thick and super big. The uh, technique that they do, um, microblading where they cut your skin and then they paint the uh, the hairs on your on your eyebrows. And it became a trend where people will have them like that, like almost so close and then so big, so big, you know, especially like young people. And, uh, and it didn't seem like something I want to do. You know, everyone has uh, uh, an idea of how they want to look. And um, I do uh, pencil, but you can also do eyeshadow or uh, there's like powder you can do. And it's just how long uh, do you wanna take uh, doing that? And it's really an art to do it with makeup, but to have your skin cut and to have uh, ink on it, it didn't seem like uh, I wanted to do that, but for some people it's uh, very attractive. So what are the trends that you're gonna go for? What kind of surgery are you going to go? Are you gonna take this part out? Like the one that is fat, are you gonna cut your face when it's all the way here, you know, the bangs we get in here as we age, like I've been seeing the C mine and they're kind of deep now. And um, your face changes as you age, you know, and <laughs> sometimes it's hard to see you um, like that, but um, it's what it is, you know, it's what we go through. So how much money are you going to have in the future and what kind of changes are you going to be able to do or be doing? You know, sometimes people change in a way where... Uh, People who know them don't even recognize them anymore. And, um, you know, makeup is one of them. It's just that now with the lights, like when you have makeup, like me, wherever it's shiny, you can see the light, you know, it's like the light gets where the makeup is. And uh, my camera is not the best, but I'm working with an older computer because my um, computer that I was using uh, got broken and I haven't been able to fix it. So, um, you know, it's what I have right now. It doesn't stop my commitments. I just got um, uh, some notifications from Facebook about memories of uh, previous years. Two years ago, I made a video. I was doing the challenge with uh, the one Darren LaCroix uh, started it, the 90 days. And I remember I came um, from uh, the Christmas party with Al Jelson and George Gilbert we went to George's house. And I remember because of the um, the top I was wearing, it was similar to this. It's like a like a how do they call it? Uh, poncho. It's like a, a rebozo in Mexico, you know. It's this thing, but it was a different color. So I remember my makeup that day, and um, I was drinking a glass of wine while I made the video. So it was super late. It must have been around midnight or after midnight because I looked tired. But what are the commitments that you have, you know, um, are you keeping them? Are you keeping your commitments? And are you doing what you uh, promise yourself to do? Or just, just let it get, letting it, uh, you know, go by and just not care for it. And what are the commitments that you have and which ones are you respecting? Which ones are you um, fulfilling? And which ones are you making to not let yourself down? You know, a lot of times it's not that, we let uh, other, that, other uh, people down, but we let ourselves down by not doing what we promised we will do. And ultimately what you do to promote yourself and to uh, share a message that benefits you because you are the one who is being featured. You, as, you are the one who is being promoted. You are the one people is connecting to. So take those opportunities. I'm offering a platform right here for you to come and express uh, who you are, what do you like? You know, my talking is very simple and it's just around a simple topic and um, what comes to my mind according to what I see, to what I'm doing. 
to what I'm learning, you know, to um, what I keep on doing to be consistent with my message, with my uh, compromises, with my promises to myself, with my way of uh, uh, caring in my way of uh, wanting to reach you <laughs> anywhere you are in the world. You know, I don't know when you're gonna see this video. I don't know how old I'm going to be when you see it. And maybe when you meet me in person, I look different. I'm gonna look older. <laughs> you're gonna be like, really? Are you the same person? Yes. And we look different sometimes. And it's not just the camera or the pictures, but we do age. And sometimes uh, situations in life happen where you can very, where you can um, age very quickly. So you can change easily. And um, also uh, gaining weight, losing weight, all those affect uh, the way we look, the way our face, our body, our skin, uh, the way our uh, expression is, you know, um, all those change. <laughs> So when you go to tough situations, you can get white hair really quick. You can age 10 years really fast. But also when you're happy, when you find a significant one, when you have a new baby, when you have uh, the job of your dreams, when you get the house of your dreams, when you get the car of your dreams, when you uh, find the peace, when you know how to meditate, when you understand uh, uh, where you come from and... Uh, who are you and what can you uh, what can you afford? How can you contribute to um, how can you contribute to to our um, world and how can you possibly impact it? What is the way in which you can possibly bring value to your peers, to your uh, family, to the people who follows you? What are they gonna be looking for when they follow you? What will it be? What are you known for? Uh, what is the label of your brand? What is the label of you? What do you talk about? What do you make people feel? And why they connect to you? What do they go and find your social media? Merry Christmas. Today is 17 days until Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. I used to live in Mexico when I used to uh, listen to that song from Jose Feliciano. I thought uh, his name is Feliz. Feliciano, right? And he used to sing Feliz Navidad. I think people attach themselves to um, the significance of their name and the message calls them, right? If you look at people's names and um, what they attach themselves to, it's kind of what they uh, are attracted and what they promote and what seems natural for them, right? Jose Feliciano used to be blind. You know, he was a blind singer, but his message of love and happiness was there. You know, it's uh, people who has the ability to break barriers and and go around the world with their talents. I, um, I wish I can be a singer. I'm going to be working on uh, singing more. I would like to do um, one of the uh, shows uh, without talking. I just sing it for you. Mm, we'll see how that works with the copyright. I am aware of that. One of my videos I had to delete, I believe it was a couple of days ago. Uh, the one I did with Alex, I had uh, done myself already. Yeah, that was number 19. So I put a little piece of a song on YouTube and uh, it was copyrighted right away. I got the notification. So uh, like I, I needed to follow a claim for the monetization process. and. My account is not even monetized yet, so I don't want to deal with that, you know. I can simply do another video. It's it's easy. It's easy now. I've done so many. <laughs> I've done so many. So you do so many that you come comfortable with um, talking in the camera and, and talking to people and actually feeling them and 
feeling the vibe and feeling what they will say and, and laughing with them and crying. I've been crying on the videos as well. And I have ended the videos crying. It's just me, you know. Um, I have a chicken heart. One of my friends used to say that. <laughs> Corazón de pollo. Uh, he used to say I had a corazón de pollo. So this chicken heart is like when you cry about everything or when uh, you are compassionate or things make you cry or suffer easily or people can easily make you cry. So I guess, I guess sometimes I, I am a chicken heart and sometimes I'm strong heart. It depends. It depends. Uh, how my heart needs to be. It depends how my uh, ability to um, to stop people from harming me and uh, to demand respect and to demand appreciation and to tell people what I know that they're doing and it's not uh, what I appreciate about them. And you can always tell a person uh, what they're doing, but it's not they're doing what makes who they are. So our actions are different from our being. So if we're able to separate that, um, I think it's less harmful. And sometimes people is unable to take it easy. And um, it takes maturity. It takes wisdom to be able to understand someone. And um, we all get there. Eventually we get there, you know. Life teaches you and all the struggles you um, encounter in life are just to make you wise and um, we're all getting there we're just at different labels labels of understanding and and sometimes people place labels on us and um, it doesn't have to be what you are what people uh, place a label on you but uh, ultimately uh, what you truly are uh, is going to be seen you cannot hide who you are and uh, what is uh, what comes out of your mouth is what comes out of your heart and you brain you've been thinking that for a long time you've been feeling that for a long time and if it's realizations that just come uh, recently then that is the message new messages are always coming it's just our ability to receive them our willingness to to get a hold of them and, and understand that's the message for today so that's the message for today. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye.